today we're going to talk about wildflowers. Here in New England, when a forest is disturbed either by a uh, lightning strike or man-made activity, um, openings in the forest occur and the first species that come into uh, that situation are called pioneer species. It starts with herbaceous plants, a lot like the perennial wildflowers that we're looking at here. But it doesn't take long for them to get shaded out by young woody plants of different sorts and for those plants then to be overtaken by other species of woody plants. What it's all trying to do is become an oak beech hickory forest. But for our situation here, where there's lawn interspersed with planting beds, what I've tried to do is take as much lawn out of circulation and transfer it to other kinds of plantings. When you have a turf grass lawn, you are mowing the lawn virtually every week of the growing season. And uh, it's a monoculture, so often one pathogen will affect large expanses of your landscape. The root systems aren't that extensive. So if you can plant an alternative to lawn, either uh, a ground cover or in this case, a great planting of wildflowers, you can, instead of mowing it every week, we cut this down in the fall and we let the chaff just lay where it is to reseed itself in for the subsequent years. So we're not mowing it every week. We also have this beautiful display in May, June, and July of wildflowers. The daisies, the sweet william, a lovely fragrant plant. There are some foxglove blooming here, digitalis. There's a lupine or two down below. These are all planted from seeds. If there's a bare spot in our planting, we actually come in in subsequent years and plug in some young perennial plants to fill out that area. A couple of things I wanted to point out as I stand in the middle of our second wildflower planting here at Marsh Botanical Gardens. One is that many plants that are included in seed mixes are not actual American native wildflowers. For instance, the foxglove, Digitalis purpurea, is a native of Europe, but sometimes you'll find them in the mixes for American native wildflowers. This one was a pioneer, a uh, volunteer that came in from another planting up the hill. But I have left it for purely aesthetic reasons. In a wildflower planting, what you're working against is the seeding in of, of grasses, often non-native species, and you're also working against the incursion of woody plants into the planting. Many of these woody plants um, are non-native invasive species, but there are also many native species that will tend to seed in and want to grow in your wildflower planting. So one of the aspects of wildflower planting is you have to go through once in a while and remove the woody plants that will shade out your wildflowers. In this planting, I have purposely planted three American native woody plants. There's an American smoke bush, there's a sourwood, and I also have a sumac growing behind me. So I encourage you to think of lawn alternatives, including wildflowers. For wildflowers, it's important to plant in the spring. The best way to do it, the cheapest way to do it, is to plant a good seed mix. Plant the seed on ground that has been harrowed or raked or tilled so there's good seed to soil contact. Water the first few weeks if it's dry and then enjoy a great display for many years to come.